the British Council has been uh, helping and supporting the development of Creative Cities for uh, several years now. Creative Cities being um, a perspective that um, culture and creativity make up a big part of um, urban development. One component of this thinking is the important role of creative hubs in development and in innovation. So what are creative hubs? These are normally uh, centers, spaces, groups. They could be physical or non-physical. They can be maker spaces, artist-run spaces, um, hacker spaces, fab labs, or the more general term like innovation centers. We recently did uh, a research in the UK identifying these hubs. They found out that um, these hubs uh, contribute uh, a big part to a city's development, um, to, uh, to communities, and also to economic development. In Southeast Asia, we're also doing the same uh, research in uh, Malaysia, in Vietnam, Thailand, and Indonesia. And we hope that through this research, we're able to support uh, a network of creative hubs. Here in the Philippines, um, we're working in partnership with Ateneo Art Gallery to better understand the context of creative hubs. When British Council invited us to do the research on creative hubs, we thought it would be a great opportunity for us to get a better sense of the landscape of creative hubs and innovation centers around the country, especially because of their definition of creative hubs as entities that facilitate the exchange and transfer of knowledge parallels very much with what we're trying to do here in the university. We are about to launch Arate, the creativity hub of Ateneo de Manila University. It's a space that envisions bringing together the arts, the sciences, and all other disciplines. In one wing, we have the Ateneo Art Gallery, the visual arts, the theater arts, and in another wing, the learning innovation wing. In choosing the lineup for this preliminary study, we realized that many of the creative hubs today started as artist run initiatives. So when we came up with the listing, we wanted it to be representative of different um, art forms, visual arts, um, film, media-based practices, and theater, including dance and music. We also wanted to include co-working spaces and innovation centers, the latter especially because of recent developments in the educational system with the introduction of uh, the K-12 program, many schools are adopting their own um, innovation center programs. As a preliminary study, it's a good jump off point to understand the ecology and direction of creative hubs in the Philippines. Green Papaya was founded on the basis of need among emerging artists or young artists to have a platform for them to present their work. But I think our focus would be more on the process, knowledge building, rather than trying to seek out an end product to something. At the beginning, it was a dream of finding out how we could put a girls' education center. It's really intended to provide an alternative space where girls can explore the disciplines of the 21st century. But eventually, when we connected to our industry partners, it turned out to be the need out there to create an alternative learning hub where you don't only learn the highly demanded 21st century skills, but more importantly, it's a place where you get to fuse together both emerging, traditional, and avant-garde approaches to learning and teaching. So now, the buzzword that it came to be is innovation. So this is a collaboration between an academe and an industry partner. Nine 
TAP started in 2012 uh, because at that time there was a dearth in spaces wherein artists and creatives like us had a place to share, whether it's um, projects, ideas, or anything that they wanted to collaborate on. We have many activities, events, um, projects, and programs within the team. This uh, started in Cobal and it has evolved up until we moved to Escolta. These are various ways wherein uh, people can share things, whether it's through talks, a bazaar, even a simple meal or gathering. We also have um, exhibitions, uh, markets, um, different ways um, to make um, art, creativity, and design more accessible. We also have a residency program. We have invited and hosted um, several artists from different parts of Asia and also Australia and Italy. And they have used uh, Manila as a jump-off point for their research and projects. Because the composition of 98B, um, we're all practicing artists, curators, writers. So individually, we do have our own networks and we pull them all together um, in 98B. wanted a physical space where the social development space would you know collide and cross-pollinate the commercial space. We take pride in building a robust community so it's not just about you know working here but really um, getting the community engaged. So we have several programs, we have talks, we have um, in the co-working world what is called jellies which is kind of an informal get-together. We have uh, workshops also, so basically to enhance the co-workers' knowledge. Actually, it all started when I was in Korea during my residency wherein uh, I was with other Asian artists, artists from Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, uh, Thailand, and Korea. And then um, it was a year-long residency and during that time we thought that maybe we can start a residency program in different cities, different countries. Uh, we do exhibitions with, uh, well, here in Bukban and then we also have uh, collaborations with galleries in Manila and then exchanges with other institutions in, in other countries. Various Artist Projects started in 2013. Um, our headquarters for the Foundation's activities um, is in Las Casas Filipinas de Alcazar in Bagak Bataan and we have a satellite space here in Manila called Bellas Artists Outpost where we have an exhibition space for all these projects and also a reading room and an art library that is free and accessible for everyone. We work with different communities uh, depending on the project. Um, for example with Pavel Altamer his point of interest was to engage with the Capo community during the Black Nazarene procession. The Casa San Miguel began actually was a product of my residency in Kansas City, America. Um, when I was serving a two-year residency for the National Endowment for the Arts, then I decided I should just come home and do what I was doing in America here in the Philippines. Basically, we teach the kids here um, how to play music. They have six subjects. They learn their solo instrument. They have their theory class, their solfege class, their technique class, their ensemble class, which is a class where they learn how to play together. And they also have an arts class.
kasi patlawin ang ensembles started as a um, company of actors having reunion, staging performances uh, in alternative spaces. Um, we are alumni of the Philippines for the Arts. So naghanap kami ng alternative modes na kayang yakapin yung aming mga production at sa paraan na mababayaran pa rin namin yung sarili namin um, na, ng mga tamparan. So we started performing um, in alternative spaces, bars, um, living cafes, rooms of houses, living rooms of houses, toilets, mm -hmm. uh, parking lots. Yes. So if you ask us, sino ba yung audiences o communities ng Sipat Lawi ng Song, mm -hmm. malawak ang range ng, um, ng mga communities na kasama namin sa iba't ibang pagkatanghal. Mula sa mga kabataan, sa mga children communities, sa mga NGOs, sa iba't ibang uh, underprivileged areas sa Maynila na tinutuluan namin. My wife and I uh, rented this space. It's a, it's a two-story old house. Um, we live upstairs. But downstairs, we're full of books by my dad, other objects left over. My wife and I found the potential of actually emptying this first floor for us to have an active space of discussion. For us to also host friends um, who are filmmakers and artists and you know, dialogue with them to hopefully be in the center of things again in the discussion of our practice. Because most of the hub managers or the people who lead these spaces um, are quite inspirational and influential to, um, to the community. We've been trying to support uh, the less popular forms like um, sound and moving image. Uh, we do a lot of talks, discussions. Part of our programs is a residency program. We started way back in 2004, I think, in partnership with Asia Link when we started to host uh, Australian artists. For example, the maker spaces we have visited in the US, in Japan, uh, Korea, in the United Kingdom, they're all heavily concentrated on producing a product. But a product, a tangible product, is just one side of the making process. What if the product is attached to a set of services, human services that help you enrich the value of that product? That's, I think, something that we were able to introduce here so that when we tell our students we make something, we ask them deliberately, how are you going to add more value? Or how is this product going to add more value to the lives of the many people you have in mind? What we want to do is to be able to build relationships, friendships, something deeper that's beyond the art practice. That, I think, is one way by which um, our goals are quite different from others. So we use all of these things combined to further more research, to further more engagement, and to like slowly build a community that believes in the same things. So like one of our key projects this year, we're doing a Better Brixton, what we call Better Brixton project. Since I was planning programming for the year, I wanted to do something around innovations on modern living in terms of um, architecture and the built environment and you know basically address things like mobility, the lack of public spaces. So it's going to make life more livable. <laughs> well I think one of the contributions that we could do is probably we can uh, help in enriching the existing cultural scene that we have here. So parang in Lokban is very known for pahiyas. So parang aside from pahiyas uh, we could probably bring uh, contemporary art so that people would also have another things to look forward to when they visit the fun. We started various artist projects because we wanted to create a platform where people can uh, discover new things. We wanted to create new dialogues and nurture new connections between local, international and different types of uh, art practices. A lot of the people that uh, come to CASA are mostly children, families and children of fishermen, uh, low-income families, so underserved um, communities. It was pre-election in 2010 during the Gloria Arroyo regime and we felt like um, with everything that was happening, the 
Meron sa massacre, there's impunity. So then appointees and cultural and government offices. We were thinking that you know, um, no theater company was responding to what was happening at the time. It's a long story, but uh, it started out as an as a editing um, business. Those who would come would have the need for their films to be made and to be cut. But eventually, as soon as, the, as this evolved, uh, and we transferred here in this space. Started off with um, uh, simple screenings of films, independent films by local filmmakers, also a little bit of international filmmaker friends, uh, but also I, I conducted small group uh, workshops. We also do um, installations, video work, um, maybe a bit of performance to maybe present this work in a different venue, um, a different audience. Hubs play a big role in the development or the attractiveness of a city, in the identity building of a city, and this in turn attracts tourists, investors, um, and other artists and creatives to move to those spaces. Spaces like Green Babaya, we believe is important in community building, communities of artists um, and communities, building communities with other communities. So I think uh, based on these two basic principles, we sustain Green Papaya up, up to today. So we're now running 17 years. In the Philippines, it's called the first integrated makerspace. The term integrated is powerful. It's integrated to the curriculum. Because if you have a makerspace consciousness, and it's not attached to a school-based program, it dies and business and this is out. It's important to note that in early years, as much as we were rehearsing from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., the sisimula ni pa knowledge. How do we sustain this practice? Because a lot of Filipinos are very passionate. Gusto natin to eh. We want to perform, but how do you sustain it? The tutuna nam sisipat. It's not because people don't want to be in the theater. I don't need a performance. You know, it's just that wala lang entry points or access points para makapasok. So how do you build an inclusive space that can be used for young people, be it as collaborators, audience members, or part of the process of production? I think what makes Casa unique is that it's, a, it's very dynamic. The things are always changing. It's very flexible. So we adapt to times. Technology has changed the, 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 the way that we run the place. So when you come here, things are always different. They attract um, creatives from different sectors, young and old, and they get together and um, they inspire people to exchange ideas and spark innovation. Uh, we have the fabrication laboratory. It's like um, a little maker space where our students can use the gadgets that we have to make printers. So then soon we will have our uh, laser cutters, circuit pens, circuit pens, cut and print device and everything so that they can do their prototype have the actual um, project that we have, they have the tangible item that they want to do so that they could revise it, perfect it, and soon market it so that it will become feasible for them. Teach our students to do coding, to do robotics as early as possible. Yes. So we teach them how to build things and how to solve things. So at that laboratory, creative thinking, um, so problem solving is very much evident. How the students do their project. We're actively cultivating the diversity because we believe there's strength in diversity. And for a startup community, you need different kinds of expertise. So you might need a lawyer, you might need someone in finance, you might need somebody in, um, I don't know, in marketing. And a lot of it tends to be the same challenges, even if you're working in different industries. So I think it's also great um, to be able to interact with, with people who might help give you a different perspective. Hopefully, we were able to offer the local community other possibilities on how to look at issues, things, and approaches that they can do or tap that are being used by contemporary art, na translation of ideas into their everyday life. Shireen and I consider ourselves really as somewhat 
of an outsider, not belonging to any circle, and even in between art and film. Um, we consider ourselves as filmmakers, but we also think that there is a need to think and discuss with others how film can be considered as an art and not just an entertainment. And hopefully also contribute in other venues in terms of maybe performance or installation or video work. Through the residencies, we're able to invite international artists and local artists and through these exchanges are quite valuable for not just for each other but for the craftsmen that they work with and for the communities that they collaborate and ex expose their works to. With that a lot of experimentation happens and uh, everyone, each person that takes part in these projects discovers something new and this is something that we hope we can show to the, the audience here is this way of producing art projects and this way of um, collaborating with different people.